Hello guys, uh, we're back. I wanted to do a quick little video showing where where I'm at on this uh, signal generator. Uh, right now I'm doing just some testing on the modulation circuit or at the audio amplifier, the uh, oscillator that will be used for modulating the RF. Um, we have a signal on the scope and our attenuation for it is working good so we can bring it up and down uh, it's running around pretty close to 400 Hertz uh, plate voltage on it's about 141.7 I was figuring somewhere around 140 so not too too shabby on that uh, the wave is not dead perfect but it's not too bad uh, part of it is is uh, I had to make a couple substitutes in the circuit or at least one particular one for sure and uh, so that that kind of made some minor adjust uh, probably made a little bit of degradation here uh, with this wave plus also uh, some of that could be just coming from the leads and stuff. I may have a uh, do a little playing around some lead dress and stuff, but uh, this is the uh, the basic circuit. Now uh, I'll kind of go over what's going on here just in a second. I want to show you a little more with this what we got going on, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Bring her down. So I can flip this thing over and uh, let you kind of see some of it. So just bear with me here. Nice thing about this, about wire, these spools, if you got something that don't want to set quite nice for you, they kind of come in handy. Setting on here. There we go. So here's the base circuit right here. Uh, a few capacitors and a few resistors. There's not much to it. Uh, the uh, plate load resistors. This guy here. That's the uh, 5.6k. Uh, the change that I made was this. This guy here, this 0.22 microfarad, it's a feedback uh, decoupling cap. And, uh, yeah. That I, that I changed out a little bit there. And it should be a 0.027. I am out of 0.027s. I need to do a better job keeping track of my inventory. The uh, basic tank circuit. For this is these two coils across this capacitor so it's, it's really nothing more than this and then you got a just a offtake here though feeds into it now it's a Hartley oscillator So, basically what that means is, is I've got a, uh, a tap coil and a single capacitor that feeds into the uh, tank circuit. Uh, basically what happens is when this unit comes on, we get current flow through the tube, it comes down, comes through a a capacitor and to block out the DC and then we've got a, a potentiometer and, and a load resistor here for the output and then that comes through the ground feeds back to the coil energizing this coil the mutual inductance between this coil and this coil will allow this one to induce a current into this coil 
and then that starts the oscillation because then as this builds up it comes through and builds up the capacitor here and here and then once the capacitor is fully built up then current reverses and starts flowing the other direction and you just start getting oscillation back and forth back and forth the tube is biased uh, as a general standard oscillator anyway in the C region which means it's a class C which means it's most of the time spent in cutoff the uh, grid is biased at a very negative value keeps only just a little pulse when the grid gets positive enough on the positive swing of the oscillator to finally flow current the tube will flow and it'll feed this coil here which in turn just keeps the oscillator going that's really all there is to it the tube I'm using is a 6C4 um, uh, excellent tubes uh, for oscillators uh, they'll work up to 150 megahertz and down to easily doing audio as well uh, they're very forgiving tube you can do a lot of playing with them and they just keep on going they're uh, a powerful tube uh, 150 megahertz they'll put out about two and a half watts up to around 50 to 75 megahertz they'll put five watts out so they they've got some punch to them so the and they're used quite a little bit in uh, high, more higher frequency oscillators as well but a lot of generators also use them for audio um, circuit for their modulation circuit so anyway uh, once I get something wrote up in a little neater category I'll basically go over some of the math I use for determining some of the circuitry in here and, uh, and then I'll post that too but uh, that's where we're at right now in the next video we're actually going to go ahead and I'm gonna try to do some of the stuff I'm not really good at doing stuff on camera but we'll try to uh, work on the main RF and you know start putting some components in there and stuff yeah, on camera and stuff and uh, kind of just bring you into the build as much as you know possible but uh, the old girls working and so at least the audio section the RF section might become a little more touchy but we'll we'll get there and and uh, get it put together so it'll probably take several videos as we put this together because uh, it'll take a little time with me doing the work kind of pretty much on camera or and explaining some things of what I'm doing uh, you know about wire dressing how to measure wire how to do things of that nature just some real basic stuff as well as theory of uh, you know how the oscillator works and, and stuff so look forward to that uh, I know you guys are hungry for even more theory and there will be more theory uh, the biggest problem that I'm running into is the theory is going to get a little more complicated the math is going to get a little more complicated so be prepared for that um, but I do want to kind of go over something with you as far as what is known is uh, uh, when you're doing design work a lot of times you don't work with something that looks like this um, you'll work with something that well as far as the tubes concerned you'll work with something similar to um, you know, let's see something like this G for grid um, come down and see that would be the plate cathode and this would be like uh, GM E1 or EG and this would be E2 positive here 
and this will be like oh, E1, whoops, E1, it paused up here. This is what is known as equivalent circuit, and this is actually for current, oh, I forgot one thing, uh, this is going to come over here, this is RP. Now, it looks complicated, but grid, grid, it'll be your grid here, plate here, plate here, cathode, cathode, and uh, GM is just mutual conductance times the voltage on the grid is what makes the tube operate. E2 is just the output voltage coming out of, from the, across the plate to cathode. RP, that's supposed to be a little R. P is just the plate resistance, which is in also in the uh, uh, characteristics. E1 is just input, your signal input voltage into the tube. And that's basically all there is to it. And then anything else, all the rest of it is just hooked to the circuit this way. Where each each item actually hooks. So anyway, I'll kind of go over what how this works and why you do it that way more imposingly than this way. But these this is uh, for it easier to figure out figures and stuff, and I'll explain that later in uh, some more theory. So anyway, that's where we're at. And even when I try doing a short video, I end up running long. Uh, I really don't have anything else more. Uh, I hope you can kind of see some of the circuitry in here. Uh, I meant to kind of do this with you guys, but it it was just the the audio section, and only the other thing is the power. So, but this one we will definitely because this is the main signal generator here, and uh, we'll definitely get to it, and we will do it. About the only thing I've done is, um, is run some some wires up, and uh, this is the B plus here. Um, this will be filament coming up here, so otherwise it's not hooked up, and uh, so we'll go over that as we go along. We'll just slowly start putting it together, and after it's done, we'll see if it works, and. Uh, you know, sometimes these things don't always work right out, out of the, uh, when you're done with them, um, right out of the gate. Sometimes you have to do a little smidging, playing around with some values. Sometimes you don't have <laughs> the right values. And, you know, and the math is, is just math. It, uh, you know, it deals with absolutes and the real world is not absolutes, so. So sometimes things either don't work at all or they work they don't work as way you expect them to work and so then you have to do some troubleshooting and, and adjustments and stuff. So thanks for your comments guys. I will I uh, uh, today will be getting back to some of the other uh, the new comments I've gotten and uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again. Bye.